Hi and welcome to a new series. I would like to talk about communication, backend communication. And uh, this will cover everything from XIX requests, um, adding a base URL somewhere in your code and um, much more. So let's get started. So I prepared a bit for you and um, let's dive into it. Um, as you can see, I prepared a new app which is out of the box, uh, the out of the box app. I just uh, removed the data from my store and what I would like to do today is uh, use XIX request to get the data from my backend and to show them in the um, list. So in my main controller I added an init function and if I run it right now, let me just rerun it, you can see it's nothing is uh, happening. So I'm adding in here an xix request. I will go into that a bit later. Let me just start this now, rerun my browser and as you can see we get this requests, I get the data, I get some output in here and now let's dive into it. With the xix request we are, will add a couple of information, we will add this object in here and the first thing we want to add is our URL. As you can see in here it says apps com resources sim users it's the same as in here now we want to run this and as soon as we get the information if we succeeded or if we failed we want to do something so the first thing is let me just rip out these two a callback whenever we run an xix request we can say callback and define a method in here. Request callback. So I have in here my request callback and all it's doing it's just outputting users callback which is down here. And as soon as I run this it doesn't matter if I fail or if I succeed so let me just rerun this. Uh, re rerun this. This was wrong. This is Right, okay. We get this callback. Now let me add an error in here and just say users with a double S. I rerun this. Now we get an error that it was not able to run users as you can see in here. It couldn't find it. And still it says users callback. So whenever we run this, we will get this callback. Now let me add these two. Whenever something failed, we can say, okay, as soon as it failed, run this method, request failure. And what it's supposed to do, it's saying, okay, try to figure out if there's a response JSON, if there's no response uh, uh, JSON, which we won't have um, for now, um, it will output the response status and response text. So let's run this. And again, it fails, but we get this 404, which is the status, not found, which is the text. Let me just get that in here. Um, the answer is a 404 and we see in here it says 404 not found. So it's exactly this and I'm just adding in here users so that we know okay it's our user score. Now if we succeed, let me rerun this with a successful call, we get the information everything from here and we get a success information and our callback. So whenever we succeed we get the success and the callback. Success 
method and callback method. So how does it know by the string where the method should be? It's defined by the scope. As soon as you add a scope, which is this, this in this case is our controller. It means that it will bind, it will say this dot request success, it will run this. And if further it will do, say ext bind and it will bind this method with this. So whenever we get into our request success, the scope in here is, is equal to this, to the, uh, sorry, to the controller. Okay. So, this is how we do define as a method which is bound to the controller so that inside this method, this is the controller so that we can call other methods from within the controller. And it's all done by this scope. So, we get in here success, failure, callback, and a scope. This is our object with which we parse. And what I'm right now doing, why we get the information in here is as soon as I succeed, I say this list data. So I'm going in here and saying, okay, I get the response. Let's just take a look what the response is, shall we? Debugger and rerun this. <clears throat> We get into the success and in the success method, we do have our request. Um, what did I, a response, sorry. Um, we get the response. And inside the response, we do have this response text, which by default, is a text and we need to decode it to get an object out of this. And this is exactly what I'm doing in here. ext decode response response text. And I do know from the data which we are um, getting <clears throat> that all that it is inside data. Okay, so we're getting the data and now I'm saying this and again, we are within the scope of the controller in here because of the scope. And this means this in here is the controller and this list data and we are adding the data which we received. And we're just saying, get me the user list, get the straw from the grid set the data to data. And that's basically it. That's how we just right now are adding the data in here. So we are not adding them, we are replacing them because we are saying set data. Um, and this is how we do get all the data from the backend, which is from the call in here from this users. And in here, you can right away see that we get all these data. Yeah. And that's how we get all the data from the back end to our front end. So again, on success, we decode the data so that we get an object as in here. And from there, we are retrieving the data and we're just pushing the data onto our store. That's basically it for today. For our next one, we will talk about uh, using exactly the same, but we are going just for users instead of this long path. And sorry, because we will define this out as our base URL. And I hope to see you again next time and um, have a great day and 
Until next time.